guys, thanks for tuning in. This is Optibotomus coming at you with another video review. And today we're going to be taking a look at the new Hot Toys Amazing Spider-Man 2, <laughs> Spider-Man. taking a look at the packaging first as you can see we got spider-man just kind of hanging out in his new costume one of the most <laughs> controversial aspects of the new spider-man when it first came out was the way that it, uh, his suit looked and in amazing spider-man 2 they went back to a more classic look and that's what basically we have here as you can see this is also the sideshow exclusive version which we'll touch on here in a little bit got the hot toys logo movie masterpiece on the side come around here there's a lot of text in the background come around to the back and you got the warning and things of that nature. Uh, it does have this staggered kind of a shoebox package, which is really cool. I like the way that it uh, actually does that. Then you slide that off and taking a look at the inside, you've got a nice, very deep red image of Spider-Man as well as the cast and crew. That's responsible for making this figure. Uh, then you just remove this section and on the inside you have the figure as well as all of his accessories. Now, this guy comes with a ton and a lot of them are really kind of strange to be totally honest. Now, some people have criticized the uh, the choice of accessories with this, but uh, I'm, I'm fairly happy with how it actually turned out. But packaging wise, uh, that is what you're looking at for. Like I said, I love the, the staggered image on the actual box. I think that's really cool. But that's about it for the packaging. So without further ado, let's get him open and see how cool he actually is. All right, guys, so here we have Spider-Man from The Amazing Spider-Man 2 opened up and out of his packaging. And I am really pretty impressed with this. Uh, I, I didn't have too much of a problem with the first one, and I'll bring him in and we'll do a comparison here in a little bit, but uh, I didn't mind that one. Uh, a lot of people really didn't like the suit. I liked it. I thought it was kind of true to the original one in terms of a, an homage, but an updated look as well. I, I gotta say, going back to the original look though, really has blown me away. And for the second movie, I really think that it shows a nice evolution of that suit. I mean, the first one was kind of a hodgepodge of things that Peter Parker put together to make uh, his suit out of. I mean, you remember he had tennis shoes for the love of God. This is just a much more refined look and now has that more classic look that a lot of people really like. So in addition to the suit nicely capturing that update in the film, a lot of the accessories are also updated and some of the features on the figure itself are also completely new, which really is impressive. Now, in terms of some of the things that we've gotten before, uh, the, he does come with some new uh, little web slingers. I, I do want to say that they are the same. Uh, I don't think they're really different from what we've gotten before. Uh, they, well, they might actually be a little bit different here where they actually connect because the connecting bit here is a little bit different, but you just got a nice long one. I'm just going to flip around here to the back. You got this nice long web. Uh, you got two of them actually. And then you got two also that uh, have a little bit of a globule bit here at the end. Uh, I do think that the other one came with a little bit more in terms of the webs. Uh, I remember there was one that almost looked like it was uh, spreading out at the tip instead of just having a little globule sort of look. Uh, so that's kind of unfortunate that we don't have all those same ones, but I do like the fact that we uh, get more of those. Now, some of his accessories are very scene specific, and some people have complained because they would have liked, a, I guess, a little bit more iconic of uh, accessories. Uh, he does come with a bullhorn, which it, it's... It's a bullhorn. It, it's nothing spectacular. It, it looks like one's got a nice paint job on here, but he used this at the actual end of the movie uh, when he was talking to the rhino. Uh, some people have complained that they would have preferred having a manhole cover that maybe could have one of these pieces attached to it. I think that would have been nice to have, but uh, I do like this. I Honestly, I really would have liked it if he came with the, his fireman's hat that he wore when he first started battling Electro. That would have been a cool touch. And then he comes with a, a variety of additional clothing to kind of replicate a 20 maybe not even a 20 second scene like a 10 second scene where he was sick and in a bit of a convenience store now uh, he was just dressed up as P peter parker he's the, the clerk there was gonna get robbed uh, so he quickly put his stuff on and uh, he had all this kind of stuff now as you can see he comes with a nice vest it's a uh, very marty mcfly ish um do these pockets now he doesn't have actual pockets but it's really a nice material you can feel that it's uh, kind 
kind of padded on the inside. And then uh, what's really very nice is the bottom section here actually has a wire so you can bend that and you can actually get that posing in a variety of ways. It, it's really neat that they included something like that just to get a, a little bit of a flow going. Uh, and then you can take this and you can, I'm gonna see if I can get this done right. I'm very bad with zipping these uh, things up, but you just take that, you slide that in there. Oh, and look at that, Optibotomist knows how to work a zipper. Well, well, maybe. There we go, zipper works. I'm just gonna pull it from both sides, but you can see, you can have that zip up. Uh, really, real nice touch here, I really dig that. It's very simple, but it's very, very fun, and it is poofy, so uh, it does give you a much more realistic feel. Uh, he also does come with uh, a scarf, which a uh, pretty nice long scarf. One thing that's interesting about it is that it actually has this cut that goes down the middle. Uh, I actually like that, because when you look at the movie, when he's wearing it, and I'm just gonna use my finger as a, as a reference, uh, right now when it's wrapped around his neck uh, it's more it's a lot more thinner than this so it gives you the ability to kind of wrap that around and make it a little bit more uh, thin I guess to get more of that look going uh, at least that's I mean I don't know if that's why they did it this way but uh, for me I like that because it wasn't this big and bulky around his neck uh, it was when you look at it more a uh, half kind of thing so that's really cool I really do appreciate that now uh, that's a nice little touch and then you've got the little uh, tassels here at the end so good detail on that as well he also does come with a beanie that has a little bit of a fur bit on there uh, again very simple it's just a little hat that's that's really it uh, nice material around material bleh, material -er? nah, I don't even know what I'm saying nice material on here you got a little bit of a stretchiness down here so you can get him wearing that uh, again nice accurate color to the actual film and then he comes with his backpack which looks really great and again you got that nice wire uh, frame on the inside so you can actually pose this any way that you want uh, that both sides has that you got a nice little hook or handle thing here you can actually open this and it's uh, a working clasp that you can open and all you see in the inside there is uh, some stuffing so it's nothing overly spectacular but you do have a actual working uh, clasp right there which is nice you got some zippers right up there that do look like they move but I don't know what you would put in them but uh, you do have his backpack which is great because odds are this is what he was actually going around uh, with his suit attire in and he was able to change that real quick in that scene and be able to save the day and that's basically it now he also does come with the sideshow exclusive a plutonium the bit um it's it's nothing really spectacular uh for some reason it actually the, the it spins which is kind of strange uh coming in to look at the detail on it i mean it's got really nice detail in there um but it's very tiny and uh, again it's a very scene specific accessory that uh, I probably would have preferred to have a couple more of these because there was a lot that he was having to uh, hunt down in the beginning part of the movie. But you got that nice uh, gold piece there in the middle. I mean, really good detail. I really, really appreciate it. I just, I would have liked to have more or maybe a, a bit of a webbing that you could clasp around there or something like that as if he was grabbing it. Something simple like that. Now, uh, setting that there again. This is a sideshow exclusive version. You only got this if you ordered uh, this figure from sideshow collectibles So getting these off to the side and setting him kind of back the other thing that he comes with is a dynamic stand which uh, I, I do remember uh, kind of criticizing uh, Hot toys uh, for not using a different kind of stand before it just came with the regular uh, crotch grabbing cradle But this one is actually really nice. You can see the amazing spider-man 2 spider-man logo on here got a real nice image of uh, the spider logo with some webbing there and then again you got the dynamic posable stand which is absolutely terrific you can get this guy in some incredible poses all courtesy of this stand now i remember saying that i wish that the original one uh, came with a clear one so that you could have them hang upside down and you would have this little seat clamp uh, that you could put around his waist this you can absolutely do that with and i think it's terrific i love this stand the other thing that's really neat is if uh you grab hold of the side well here actually you have to unscrew this take that out and then take this and you gotta kind of have to grab it from an edge there we go uh, maybe and i don't have the fingernails to do it all right there we go take this off and you can actually remove this if you want and you don't have to use that you can take this and you can use this as your display option and again it just slots in here 
just like so, and boom, now you have a completely different look for your uh, display stand, which also looks really good. I think I like this one a little bit more. This one has a much more graffiti kind of look to it, but I still think it looks terrific. Uh, both of these look really nice, but I think this is the one that I'm going to uh, probably display it with a little bit more. This kind of matches a little bit more, but I just really like this one. And for the final accessories, he also comes with a really impressive update to what they've been doing for a long time with hands. Instead of giving you full on hands, they're basically just giving you now fingers that are held on by magnets. As you can see, you have uh, two which are basically going to be close fists. You have two in his uh, very famous web shooting kind of look. Uh, you got two that allow you to have him holding his web uh, after you know after he shoots it, and then you got two uh, kind of thumb looking things that are spread out a little bit differently. Uh, one is, one looks a little bit wider, probably designed to hold uh, the megaphone a little bit more. And then the other one, I, I don't know. I mean, maybe they're supposed to be the, the same spread net difference, but one looks a little bit wider. And then a really ni nice new set is uh, with his fingers down. So you can get him where he's like putting his hands down on the ground, which looks really cool. And zooming in here, all you basically do is you can see that this just detaches. Now, unfortunately, um, this is Hot Toys, so the magnets don't stay glued in very well, or the little piece of metal, I should say, don't stay glued in very well, so sometimes you have to replace that, but that's what you're basically left with, and it's really creepy, but it works. So, if you wanted to replace that again, you just take another one, you got two little prongs right here that peg into some holes there. You just put that on there, line that in, kind of uh, wiggle that, and then give that a nice little push. And now, there you have his hand with the, the web shooting gimmick. Or if you want to take this one, again, you just take off the, uh, the fingers, set this off to the side, and let's say m maybe he wants to have a fist. So you just put that in there, push that in, lock that in, and now he's got a fist, which, I mean, this is really cool. It's a new design that I honestly don't think I've seen on any figures. Uh, and it's absolutely terrific. I mean, you can take this, again, just swap this out, put that down, put on this, and now, like I said, you can have him with this uh, unique look where he's going to be pushing down on the ground like that. I mean, all of them are really very cool. And honestly, I, I didn't know how, how I would actually respond to this uh, initially, because I was like, that's gonna be kind of weird. But again, I mean, the like I said, the, the little metal pieces and the magnets usually <laughs> it just pulls right off. Uh, I mean, I didn't know how I was going to like this initially. It, it's a new look that I, I thought was going to be kind of weird, but it really turned out pretty good. Now, part of the reason why they did this was they actually uh, glued the actual arm material onto the hand, the upper part of the hand itself, so that now when you rotate his wrist, you can see that his web slinger actually comes, uh, this, this, I'm gonna have to glue this one, or glue that uh, metal piece in there, but putting that there. So as you rotate this around, this comes into position, which, and then it can rotate back. It's absolutely wonderful. One thing that I will say though, is you have to be very careful. These arms can detach, or these hands can detach. And unfortunately, this, the fabric, like I said, is just glued. When I accidentally detached this one, it completely came off and pulled away the actual the material here. So I had to glue that back on, but it glued on perfectly fine. It was just a matter of making sure that I lined it up properly. Uh, so you do want to be careful not to detach this. I mean, you see it can detach, but it's not meant to. So be careful when you're pulling this. And I'm absolutely curious to see if they're going to incorporate just the swapping out of the, uh, the fingers on any future figures. Because I do think that it works very nicely, especially here with Spider-Man. Now, coming up to the rest of the figure, again, like I said, you have all these extra bits of cloth that you can put on them. Uh, all you have to do is really dress them, and it's rather unfortunate because this is the aspect of uh, uh, Hot Toys and One Six Scale collectibles that my wife definitely refers to as dolls. 
Uh, she came in the other day while I was dressing him, and she's like, aw, you're playing with your dolls. And yeah, it got awkward there for a minute, but uh, as you can see, everything just uh, fits on him fairly nicely. You put the hat on, you get his little uh, vest thing. You do want to be careful as you're doing it because this is a, I guess, more, I don't want to say fragile of a undersuit, but you don't want, you definitely don't want to snag anything. It's uh, because it's fabric and everything, you could get some snags going on it, but uh, you can get something like that. You go ahead, put as well. We'll leave this and then we'll bring his backpack in, put that on as well. Just lift this up, and again, you can flex these little uh, straps to kind of make it however you really want, and I really absolutely love that. That's such a nice little touch that's so minor that you, you almost don't even notice it, and for me, you almost take it for granted that you can do something like that, and then you can take a scarf, and uh, I'm, I'm not very good at putting scarves on. I haven't put a scarf on in a very long time living here in Southern California. I've, been kind of fortunate in that respect but yeah you could do something like this and uh, I mean again it, it you, you can you can recreate that scene um, you can choose not to recreate that scene it's your personal preference it's it's definitely strange it's not a very long scene that he was dressed like this literally it was like a 10 second bit but you have that option and I, I think it looks pretty cool I mean it gives a very uh, unique and uh, uh, very real feel to this I mean Spider-Man always has been one of my favorite characters in the comics mostly because it was it, it was it was a kid basically Peter Parker just you know it was a young guy got these powers and he was having fun with them and uh, had the responsibility of uh, being a superhero but I mean, it was, it was well done. It was it was always one of my favorites. And while I didn't necessarily like the first movie or how they really did things, I absolutely loved the second one. Maybe because I didn't have to relive that origin story all over again, which we got not too terribly long ago with uh, the Sam Raimi version. But uh, comparing the two suits from Amazing Spider-Man, here's the new one and here's the old one. And as you can see, uh, there is actually a size difference. The new Peter uh, or Spider-Man is actually a little bit taller than the old one, which is interesting. So I wonder if they're using a different leg thing. And honestly, I think it has to do with the fact that, or how they redesign these kind of legs. There's a lot that's really different. Uh, number one, the head is actually a different size as well. But again, you can see the vast difference in terms of the suit. Uh, well, I don't necessarily mind this. This does kind of give me a almost Spider-Man 2099 feel. So I kind of dig it. Uh, but going back to the classic look, I mean, you have this the silver with the black rims for his eyes, whereas this is kind of this yellowish gold with the black. But again, those are basically just sunglasses. This whole suit was just a hodgepodge of different things. Uh, then you come down here, he's got tennis shoes. So, I mean, I, I, like I said, it's an evolution of sorts. And you can see that there are some similarities. I mean, you've got some of the same designs. I mean, you've got the webbing, obviously, on there. Uh, it comes down into this uh, centerpiece right here. It kind of does that here as well. I mean, there really isn't that much different. You've got these black lines that, uh, honestly, you, you, I don't know how well it's going to come across, but you can absolutely see where those black lines were would have been on the actual uh, new version. So it's not that they reuse the suit, it's just that's how that the suit was actually done. Uh, then also you're seeing here for his gloves, uh, the redesigned hand. I mean, you got the full hand right here. You got just the, the fingers for this. Uh, one thing that is obviously not possible to do on this new video, you can't rotate his hands all the way around. Um, you can actually damage this, but I mean, you can get it moving in a normal human range of motion uh, but you can also see the new design for the actual gloves themselves this again much more spider-man like which again comes across very nicely uh, you come down to the legs though and again this is a part that's actually different um, if you hold these the legs completely detach now it tells you not to do this so don't do this guys but um, it, it both of them can come off uh, I think it has something to do with the fact that or in, in terms of his uh, extra height I think it has something to do with this um, 
I, I'm not a big fan, honestly, of, of that. Uh, I, I wish they would have just left it the same. Um, but, I mean, because honestly, I have no idea why they did it that way. I don't see what's so wrong about these, but uh, maybe it was just their way of giving them a little bit extra height. Maybe that's what they wanted to do. Uh, you come around here to the back, and he does have a much nicer looking Spider-Man logo, which again, is accurate to how it looked in the movie. That's how it looked in the first one. This is how it looks in the second one. So, a lot of those design elements are still there. Now, uh, this one here, uh, the original one, if you remember, the head could detach. Detach, ah, if I can actually detach it um, via this funky kind of peg. Uh, now, I haven't actually tested this, but I have seen people that can't or that have tested it. And you can take this helm or this head off and you can put that Peter Parker helm or head that I keep saying, wanting to say helmet, the Peter Parker head that came with the original one. You can put on this as well. But honestly, for me, I don't really care that much. It wasn't that big of a, a selling point initially on the figure. So uh, for me, this is just perfectly fine. Now for his articulation, it is very well articulated as you would expect a Spider-Man figure to be. Uh, you can get him looking left, right, up, down. Uh, because of the nature of the material on his mask, uh, you do want to be careful as you're rotating this around it can stretch this and as it stretches it can warp it over time uh, you just every now and then put it in a neutral pose and the actual material seems to go back pretty nicely uh, you can get it looking left and right i mean a lot of range of motion with that the shoulders i'm happy to say do not have any problems like the first one did now even though the one, version that i got actually the shoulders were perfectly fine so you get a nice range of motion but as you do it again rotate the clothes and you can get a much more nice, seamless look for it. So you can get that moving all the way up. Again, just be careful as you're rotating it. Uh, it also does have an extra a shoulder joint right here. So you can move it up, down like so. Uh, and then it has a much different one. So there's actually like two points of articulation in there, which it's really very nice. It rotates here at the upper part of the bicep, has two joints here at the elbow. The wrists are a little bit more flexible than the previous ones because, and I discovered this because, like I said, I actually pulled this out. Uh, the actual peg is a little bit more elongated, so you can get a nicer range of motion with it. So you get a little bit of a wiggle going back and forth uh, in any direction you want, and then it rotates. Uh, you come down here to the, uh, the torso. He's got a upper ab crunch. He's got a swivel right there, and he's got a, well, he's got, like two crunches uh, I want to say well yeah it's like there I mean there's like two yeah there it is uh, you got an upper ab crunch and then you got a lower crunch so you can get them really contorting and looking really very cool in any kind of pose that you might want to put them in uh, the legs move forward they move back but again the the material does restrict a little bit but you can I mean it is a uh, very durable uh, almost more durable than the, the previous one, so you can get some crazy poses with them. Uh, I do feel like this is a heavier uh, duty material than that previous suit. The, the previous one had more of a rubber feel to it, and honestly felt like it was gonna tear, but it, it stretched out fairly well. It never tore or anything like that, but then you can see like this, this detaches when you stretch things out a little bit more. Uh, it does rotate at the upper part of the thigh, he bends at two joints here at the knee, uh, but again, as you bring it back, you can see it kind of makes this separate, which y you then have to kind of squish this back down to get to uh, look good because otherwise you got this gap right here which can look really ugly at some points but you do have that he does have some nice ankle pivot moves forward and back in and out all that he also does have a little bit of a toe piece that can articulate up uh, it only goes about 30 degrees 35 degrees something like that so not a heck of a lot of range of motion but you you can actually do it uh one thing that's weird is his feet do look kind of big that's one thing that's interesting uh the other part that i want to talk about is that a lot of people are having problems in terms of some of the quality control. Uh, not so much with the actual figure, but there is a weird, almost stain on a lot of people's figures. And I do have it on mine as well. And zooming in to see that, you can see uh, people have said that it's glue. Some people have said that it's the black on the underside here coming through. Uh, honestly, it feels, well, I don't want to say it feels like anything, but it kind of reminds me of grease almost, almost. It's just a smear of sorts, but I do have one piece right there and another right here, uh, kind of right there. You can kind of see where that piece is right there. 
Uh, I, and again, I don't know what it is. I've seen some people that have had a much worse condition on theirs. Uh, I honestly don't know what it is. And it's almost hard to see because as you can see, as you move this around, the material actually has like a black underlay to it of sorts. So that when you move it around, it, it kind of looks like there's shadows all over it. Uh, and when you come to it, it kind of looks like he has that right there. So it, it was very hard for me to notice that at first. Then my camera keeps wanting to go crazy and not focus on things. But I mean, it's unfortunate that that's there, but at least on mine, I don't think it's that bad. If you do have a problem though, I would recommend contacting uh, the place that you got it from and see about getting a replacement. Cause honestly, that's, it really shouldn't have that. It should not be acceptable. So if you do get that, definitely change that out guys. But that's Spider-Man, guys. Now, with a lot of Hot Toy figures, it really does come down to personal preference. What you think is the best looking for your display. And I really think that this figure is the best for me. Not only does he have a little bit more of a classic look, which naturally I will gravitate to because I'm old school. But the improvements on this figure really do set it very far apart, I think, than that first Amazing Spider-Man figure. Ignoring the suit entirely, just looking at the improvements the longer body really does i think nicely capture that very slender peter parker frame that's not to say that the first one didn't but by making him a hair taller i think this version just goes a little bit further uh, and then also the improvement to the hands i think it's a wonderful thing uh, i love how you can actually rotate this around and it brings the web shooter right up front i, I mean it's really nice now granted it's going to take some getting used to the just energy <laughs> changeable hands or fingers I should say but all in all I think they did a great job with it it's still not a uh perfect figure unfortunately there are some of those i guess quality control aspects such as the smudges and uh, the magnets not staying properly put in but uh, at least with the magnets you can kind of fix that and then like i said with the smudges at least on mine it kind of looks like it just blends in with the rest of the shadow that's created uh, due to the material of the the red fabric all in all i think that this is a much better figure to have than that first amazing spider-man the improvements just really really, really do impress me. One thing that I really wish they actually included with this would have been maybe like an unbattled damage portrait of Peter Parker. Now, if you remember the first one, he actually had that scar on his face or something, but in doing the suit the way that they did, uh, as I said, they recommend not taking the head off. So I, I don't know how they could have had that interchangeable head aspect. All in all, I just think that this is a better representation of Spider-Man that we can have in our collections. So in case you couldn't tell, I do recommend picking this guy up. And as usual, if you you're interested in doing that all you have to do is click on the link down in the video description you go to sideshow collectibles where you can pick this guy up and you can add him to your collection today but beyond that guys that's about it so once again i want to thank you for tuning in this has been optobotamus don't forget that you can keep in touch with me by liking my facebook page at facebook.com slash teambotamus and by following me over on Twitter at twitter.com slash optobotamus. Also, I'd encourage you to check out my new website at optobotamusreviews.com, where you can see all my videos from the previous week, see what I have coming up for future release, and also get your very own Optobotamus t-shirt. And finally, I'd also really appreciate it, guys, that if you like this review, don't forget to please like, comment, and share this video. <laughs> and until next time, I'll talk to you later. Spider-Man, Spider-Man, does whatever a spider can. Spins a web, any size, catches your feet, just like guys. Look out, here comes a Spider-Man. Is he strong? Listen, bud. He's got radioactive blood. Can he swing from a thread? Take a look overhead.